Bill, what is your view of President Obama right now? I think he's a nice man. I think he's in over his head. It's amazing the way he got the job. I respect him for getting the job, but it's amazing the way he got the job. He signed up people on street corners in Chicago. All of a sudden, he's the president of the United States. I mean, he got a hell of a shellacking, as he put it, in the midterms. But his ratings right now, mid-50s, are significantly higher than Ronald Reagan and, and President Clinton at the same time of their administration. So he's doing pretty well, actually. Well, the fact is he is doing well, and the Republicans have let him back into the game because during the lame duck session, I don't know what happened with the Republicans. I don't know who was leading them, but they totally gave him credibility. He was Jimmy Carter, and now he's the Phoenix. But is this but a problem? Who, who is leading the Republicans, and who should be? I don't think there is a leader right now of the candidates. Romney, I guess, would be somebody that people are thinking about, but it's not resonating. Uh, Sarah Palin is somebody that I happen to like. I just don't think she can win the election, and a lot of people agree. She might, she can win the primary, perhaps, but she can't, she can't win the election. I, if, I can tell you, Obama is dying to run against Sarah Palin. And you can't do that again as a Republican party. You can't put somebody like in Delaware, mm. Christine O'Donnell, where she goes in and she beats somebody that would have won by 15 points. She beats him in the primary and then she gets killed in the election. Is this, is this precisely why you're so tempted to run? Well, I am tempted to run, but I think the primary reason I'm tempted, I guess, yes, I think I could win. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. I'm not doing it to come in fourth place and really do a great job as a businessman. You know, in theory, I shouldn't be able to win because they've always said somebody with great accomplishment, somebody who's done many, many deals. I've done hundreds and hundreds of deals and I've beaten a lot of people. I mean, I'm not saying it bragging. I beat a lot of people. And those guys are not nice guys and I have lots of enemies and lots of different things. And I've always heard where people like me cannot win because there's too many enemies. But whether it's me or somebody else, you need a person like me to run this country for a while because we have to get this country back so that we're respected again. We have to get this country back so that this country is making the big profits, not China, not India. I mean, American Express, you call up your American Express card, the people are based in India that answer the phone. What's going on? Our people can't do, our people can't answer a phone? So we have all of this outsourcing to countries all over the world. In the meantime, we have, but isn't, isn't, I mean, don't, we have don't, really an 18% unemployment, I, not 9%. I, I we get, have an 18% unemployment. I get unemployment. what you're saying, but aren't you being unusually for you quite defensive about this? I mean, isn't there a way of looking at this? Defensive. Yeah. <laughs> but aren't you, I know you're being aggressive, but it's kind of passive aggression, because actually isn't the way to deal with this the way that you would if it was your company? You go on the attack. Well, I would do that. You, yes. wouldn't, you wouldn't sit there going, well, this is all unfair. You go, you know something? Right, shirt right. sleeves up, let's go right. get them. No, you're right. But I and would when we come back business. after the break, I want to know how you, shirt sleeves rolled up, will get America back on its feet. Okay. Back now with my special guest, Donald Trump. Donald, what would you do to fix America? Put aside the China, the trade issue for one moment. There's something inherently wrong with the system in this country, which led to the financial crisis, isn't there? 10% of Americans are unemployed, probably more, as you say. What's the answer here? You're a great employer. Tell me how we're going to sort this. Well, for one thing, we're protecting the world. Why are we protecting South Korea without being paid? Okay? They're a competitor. They make a tremendous amount of money off of us. They sell their televisions, everything else. Why are we protecting South Korea? We just signed a horrible trade agreement with South Korea. They weren't going to sign it until North Korea lobbed a couple of bombs over there. Then they called. They said, oh, we'd like to sign the trade. You're a great partner. You're a great partner. And we stupidly send the uh, SS George Washington, the most incredible aircraft carrier I've ever seen, and 17 destroyers right into North Korea. Why aren't they paying us? I mean, why are we protecting them? They make hundreds of billions of dollars of profits against the United States. You know one of the great ones? 52 million, I don't know how many of the folks in the audience see this, but a few months ago, 52 million in cash in a briefcase was sent to Afghanistan. You know that. It ended up in Dubai, 52 million. Now, you know, the 52 million was actually 100 million probably but, you know, somebody stole it along the way, whether it's a soldier. I want to know, who is the colonel or the general or whoever it is that approved 52 million in cash? It, it definitely wasn't 52. I guarantee you, it was if more you, If you were president, would you take all American troops out of Afghanistan and Iraq now? Well, Straight Iraq, away? we shouldn't have been there, and I get them out real fast. Afghanistan is not the bigger problem. The bigger problem is Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You have to know. You know, when you fight a battle, you have to know who to fight. Mm -hmm. Pakistan probably has Osama bin Laden. Now think of it. You have a six-foot-six Arab, and we can't find him. 
who's on a dialysis machine, and we can't find him. You, you tell me this, with all our so-called intelligence and everything else, guys, six foot six, pretty unusual, right? We can't find Osama bin Laden. There's something wrong. We give hundreds of billions of dollars to Pakistan, and they're probably housing him. He may be housed, frankly, in Saudi Arabia, because you think Saudi Arabia's our friend. I mean, nobody hurts us like Saudi with the fuel prices. Well, it's okay? interesting, on Saudi Arabia, as I mentioned to you tonight, there's other breaking news, is that the king of Saudi Arabia has been very uh, firm with President Obama, basically telling him to leave off Mubarak and, you know, keep our big noses out of it, allegedly. So. What do you think of that situation that's developing, where you're beginning to see the old order in the Middle East standing up to America and saying, this is our business, not yours? They're standing up for the first time because they don't respect us anymore. They didn't used to stand up. They're standing up now because they didn't respect. They're standing up now because they can do anything they want. You have to go over there and see some of the airports that they're building. They make no, Kennedy Airport look like it's third world country. They make LaGuardia. I land at LaGuardia and then I go into Abu Dhabi and I go into Qatar. Mm. I go into these airports, oh, it's like the most incredible things you've ever seen. We're like a third world country. And they wouldn't be there. Look at Kuwait. Saddam Hussein attacks Kuwait. We then go in, get them out, we lose lives, we spend hundreds of billions of dollars, we put out Red Adair, we put out all the oil well fires, and he said all the oil wells. We hand them back the country. Now they don't invest in the United States because you know why? They say the return on investment's not good enough. We're not going to invest but may in the Maybe United. they have a point. And also, here's the other point. They companies do? like General Motors, companies like Coca-Cola, right. are all investing heavily in places like China, and they're doing very well out of it. Isn't the answer to go where the business enemy is and take them on at their own game and make money out of them? I think Isn't that what great. you would do instinctively? I think it's great. But if you look at what happened to General Electric, what happened to them with technology, where they had to give up all their technology to China, where they have to build plants in China, where they have to do all of these things. Hey, I like the Chinese. I'm fine with the Chinese. And if I were them, I'd be doing the same thing if I could get away with it. We can't let them continue to get away what with it. What are the other problems here, though? I mean, you saw the disintegration of the financial system. You can't just yes. blame foreign competition no. here. What was wrong with the system here that should be now put right properly? Well, look, you're always going to have problems with financial systems. Uh, I went to the Wharton School of Finance, which is the best business school probably in the world. I dealt with people that were super brilliant people. I know how smart they are. Regulations, I mean, these people don't know what a regulation is, and they find ways around them. You know, you have really smart guys writing regulations, but you have smarter guys figuring out how to Should beat the bankers, regulations. The, the same bankers that got us into the mess now be allowed, in regulation way, to be awarding themselves huge bonuses again. Well, so I mean, look, look what happened with Chase today. I mean, they got caught for taking advantage of military and soldiers that are in Afghanistan and Iraq and taking advantage of them. I think it's terrible. What Chase has done, I think, is terrible. And I think what the banks is doing right now, they took all the money, the taxpayer money, and if you go in, if, if anybody in this audience wants a home loan, you're not going to get it, mm. okay? You're not going to get no, because it. because they're awarding themselves millions of dollars in bonuses. And one of the things... Well, I, I think it's scandalous. I think it's terrible. And one of the things, and, and you know what, I'm saying that, and I really do, I believe it's terrible. They took all of this money to stay solvent. They're taking big bonuses. But here's the bigger problem. The big picture problem is they're not loaning the money. There's millions of empty homes because nobody can go out and get here's a Here's a tweet I want you to respond to. It's a great uh, address, by the way. Kick a snowflake is, I the, like it. is the tweeter. I like As it. President Trump, who would be the first person you'd say you're fired to? Well, I mean, they want me to say, look, you know, I have had so much. What do they want you to say? Well, they want me to say Obama. Well, you've already, fired, if you're president, okay? he's I mean, already that's, gone. That's it. Yeah. Um, Who's the number one bad guy right now you would fire? in America well uh, can I be honest I don't want to say there's so many of them <laughs> there, really are. there are so many of them you look at a Department of Education it goes for blocks and blocks and blocks so education should really be I mean we have to some some like a little bit of of supervision so you wouldn't argue, education would you? should be a local thing it should be a state Well, I was gonna mention education to you because last word with the Chinese isn't the reality with them that they are educating their people better now than America is doing and that's why they're also jumping ahead isn't that true and you know where they're educating a lot of their people at our schools it's the most amazing thing they come over they learn they go to Harvard they go to Wharton they go to Yale they go to the best schools and then we force them to leave okay when no we no we back, force them to leave no, I know that okay. when we come back I'm gonna ask you as a man who wins and knows how to pick a winner which is where I come in how are we gonna win of course, my triumphant moment, winning season one of NBC's Everly Apprentice. Uh, Donald, 
mean, it was quite terrifying and arduous and all that kind of thing. But at the end, I realise why you're such a winner, because you picked the right guy. Well, I, <laughs> I know that you're being cute, but the fact is I did pick the right guy. And Trace was fantastic. And many other people in that group were fantastic. And frankly, uh, Trace Atkins is the number one country singer right now. And when he went on the show, I was complaining. Who the hell ever heard of him? Nobody <laughs> heard of him. You know that. Yeah, yeah. So Trace is not complaining either. What does it take in general? In, I, read, I read your books before I competed in your show to try and get inside your, your brain. And I love the one called Think Big and Kick Ass, because it kind of summed up, I think, the Trump philosophy, isn't it? Which is, don't go micro on these things. Think big and you can win. Is that your steely philosophy? Well, not everybody can think big. I mean, you have home builders that build one home. They're not going to build big developments, and they do a great service to the community. You have people that do small jobs, and they do a great service. Not everybody can think big. If everybody thought big, it would be a pretty crowded world out there. It wouldn't be very pleasant. But I think that you should, within reason, think as big as you can. And, you know, it was very, very interesting with that book. That book did very well. My books all go to number one or do really well as bestsellers. But I have to tell you, <laughs> that book, because of the kick-ass, mm. didn't do quite as well because a lot of parents, it was around Christmas time, and a lot of parents couldn't buy it for their child because they didn't like the title. <laughs> it's really true. I How said, why isn't that book selling like everything else? <laughs> but they really had a problem, you know, giving a seven-year-old kid a book with that title. Here's a really interesting aspect to your character. You've never had a drop of alcohol in your life, have you? That's right. Never. I mean, I, I found that amazing when I, I discovered that fact well, about you. Well, for me, it was very easy. I mean, You've I never have... touched a drug? No, I've never had drugs. You've never smoked cigarettes? I've never had cigarettes. And you don't even drink coffee, do you? I, and I don't drink coffee. I mean, it's amazing. Well, I, yeah, and I have other problems, I guess. But well, I we're going to come to the women okay. in, a, a, in no, a moment. I, I didn't necessarily mean that. <laughs> women are your vice, right? No, I just respect women. I find women very beautiful. I think women are great. I have a fantastic wife, Melania. Uh, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to come back to the women because I want to focus more on this, on this discipline and where you get it from. You told me once a very interesting story about you had an older brother who was an alcoholic and he died of alcoholism and he told you before he died, don't drink and don't smoke. Well, I had an older brother named Fred, who was a great guy, a handsome guy, the most handsome guy that you've ever seen. He had everything going, but he, and he loved flying airplanes, and he actually was a pilot. He was a professional pilot. And somewhere along the line, I think it was in college, he started drinking, and he got worse and worse, and he also smoked a lot. And he would tell me, and he was quite a bit older than me, about 10 years older, he'd say, don't ever smoke, don't ever drink. Don't ever smoke, don't ever drink. And I say that to my kids now. No drinking, no drugs, no alcohol. I also say, and no tattoos, because I think tattoos are horrible. I see this tattoo phrase that's going on. And do they, I all, think follow, it's horrible. Do they all follow your lead as you did? Well, I think, well, so far my kids have been following my lead, but...